closer look at this 1930 Ford Model A snowmobile. This was built in around 2010 with a bunch of spare Model A parts I had kicking around. Currently I don't have the skis on it as you can see. But basically what happens here is the front tire is removed and replaced with this ski. This body on the back was just something that was temporarily made, but here we are, what, 12 years later, and it's still on there. Um, these tracks are homemade. The rear wheel back here is the drive wheel, just as it would be on the stock Model A. And this next wheel here was added. This is an idler wheel assembly. I'll get into the details of the tracks and the idler wheels later on. Currently running 411 gears in the rear end with a stock three speed transmission. Nothing, nothing fancy. The skis here are actually made by the snowmobile company in West Ossipee, New Hampshire. They made a conversion kit for a Ford Model T, was I modified a set of those skis to work on the edge. So the, the wood piece and the metal runner is all Ossipee snowmobile kit parts. And originally this bracket would be mounted where we have the Model A wheel mounted here. There then was another piece that mounted this to the Model T front axle. I took a 19 inch rim and modified it with this bracket down here to line up with the the bolt pattern on the original piece to mount to the ski you'll see there's two bolts that come up through that hold this onto the ski and then this just goes right on the stock model a hub just like any model a wheel would so this is what the bottom of the skis look like bogey wheel or idler assembly here. And this is a stock Model A front end. The wishbone's been cut off. The kingpins have been welded solid so they can't turn. Uses a front leaf spring from a Model A with some leafs taken out of it. And there's a custom bracket there that holds it to the torque tube. Bracket is easily adjusted in order to adjust track tension. This mounting bracket mounts right where the original shock would be for a stock Ford Model A. And this allows you to keep tension on the tracks. So you also notice these two chains that go back to the rear end itself. This just helps to stabilize that I-beam so it doesn't twist up too much and turn. So we'll get into some further detail on these tracks. As I mentioned before, these tracks are completely homemade. Seems to intrigue people the most. We you have a series of, what I'm going to say, segments tied together with three chain links that create the track. So the track, each segment consists of two pieces of angle iron, two pieces of flat stock, and then another piece that goes around the tire. So you notice here I have two different pieces that go around the tire. That's because things have changed on this slightly as time's gone on to improve it. I'll get into that later on. You see the three chain links we have here connecting the two segments together. This is solid, this is solid, and this is the flex point. This allows the tracks to go around the tires. This is where your wheel's riding. Piece of half inch rod full radius on the end and bent in this configuration to go around the tire. Now, 
I made these eight inches wide. I believe it's about two and three quarters inches apart. And it takes a total of 24 of these segments to create one track. All right, so I'm showing three different style tracks here. Um, this here is the Ossipy track for Model T. Here's a section for a uh, Model A track manufactured by the Snowbird Company. And then this is the track design that I came up with. So here we have the Ossipy Snowmobile Company track. Again, this is made for a Ford Model T. So right in here is where your tire would ride. This is what connects to your next segment. You have a series of a bolt, a spacer, and a nut on here. Take a look at the other side. This is the part that's gonna ride in the snow. So we, here we have the Snowbird track. This was made for a Ford Model A. This is where your tire would ride. You'd have a series of chain links that would connect to your next segment. Here we have the track design that I came up with, which is completely homemade. The point behind this was to try to keep the cost down and make it as simple as possible. So this is what I started out with. Get the two pieces of angle iron, your two pieces of flat stock, and then this piece, which your tire would ride in. I later changed this piece to this style design because what was happening is this was not strong enough to stay in that position for the tires to ride in and I'd throw tracks. Now, another thing that I would change on this, knowing what I know now, is right here, I wouldn't have this space. I would have a solid piece of metal going across here. So then when it's riding in the snow, this is all gonna be solid metal. Now, the reason I say that is because if the conditions are just right, what will happen is I'll end up with a ball of ice right in here and I have to smash it out with a hammer. If I don't pay attention and I let it get too large, uh, I'll end up throwing a track. And I believe if this was all filled in, it wouldn't allow so much snow to come up through here.